Well, hello YouTube. Today we are here once again with my 1990 Chrysler Imperial. We're about to do some transmission surgery. She's got about 170,000 miles on her. Still the original transmission. Presumably still the original transmission fluid. And I have started to get some, um, well, issues. While going into overdrive under any sort of load whatsoever, she'll drop into limp mode. If you're staying on the gas, it'll act like the transmission is trying to shift, but can't decide what to do. And then as soon as you let off the gas, bam, down into second gear. First, Thing we are about to do change the fluid filter and swap out the solenoid pack for a rebuilt unit um, which is right down there somewhere you probably can't see it what we're going to do to start is remove the battery this vacuum chamber right here the cruise control okay so we have our solenoid pack revealed how, what we have to do to get access to this is remove the wiring harness, which is two connectors. I believe this is the lockup connector for the torque converter. And down here we have the reverse neutral switch. Right here we have the solenoid pack, um, which is hidden behind this kind of rubberish plastic nasty cover which actually did quite a good job at keeping it clean those two connectors and you have to make remove the main connector here which is held in by eight millimeter bolt this one here is the input sensor this one is the output sensor which i changed a while back um which helped with the issues i was having at the time but yeah, so we're going to get this done and um, get this soaked down with the greaser and clean it off because we're not going to want any of this crap that's around here getting into the transmission when we remove the solenoid pack. But before we change the solenoid pack, we are going to pull the pan, change the filter, and flush the fluid. And we'll be back with that as soon as I get the degreasing and everything done. So we've got that cleaned out. And I blasted everything out with compressed air. So now it's time to go underneath, drop the pan, and swap out the filter. All right. So we've got most of the pan bolts off. So let's take a look at this fluid here. Yeah, that's pretty um, cruddy looking. Well, we'll see the damage once we get the uh, rest of the pan off, won't we? Okay, well there we go. Not sure if you can see that on camera, but it's pretty much brown. Okay, so this is some of the fluid that was left in the pan. Um, yeah, it's it's worse than I was thinking it was. Um, does it still doesn't smell burnt. It doesn't smell quite like transmission fluid either. It smells more like solvent. Take it and hold it directly up to the sun. You can't even see through it, so yeah, definitely time for a change. The filter is pretty much done for. Here's the pan. You can see we got a little bit of metal shavings in there. We're still dripping a little bit here. She's still bleeding. But after that, we'll pop in the new filter. Then fill her up flush and then swap out the solenoid pack and see if that helps any. Okay, so the pan is cleaned out and it's quite interesting to note that the magnet in the pan is simply just a magnet in the pan. It's not affixed to anything, it just sits in there. Yeah, that's where it was right there. I'm not sure if that's where it's supposed to be, but 
yeah, there was quite a bit of sludge in there too. It seemed, felt like sludge. It might have been metal particles, but it's possible that this has had a fluid or at least a filter chain at some point in its life because they just used RTV to seal the pan and did a quite sloppy job of it. But this filter did come with a gasket, so I'm going to use it. Got to get all this RTV gunk off of here as well as off the transmission housing. And we've got the new filter up in place. Still bleeding a little bit, but yeah, new filter is in. Right, clean off this gunk. Have to go and get a razor blade or something. Okay, so we have the solenoid pack out. The old one is on the left, and the new one is on the right. And as you can see, they're not quite the same. The new one has a different layout and a different gasket on there. And this is the spacer plate that goes between in the, between the transmission and the solenoid body. So we have to scrape this gasket here off, which was on this one like that. Unfortunately, it only comes with one gasket. Thankfully, the original gasket, which is down there on the transmission still, did not tear or anything when I tried taking it, when I took the valve body off. Uh, now to get, or the solenoid assembly, when, I when you take that off, you need to remove the output speed sensor, which is well, right there. Remove three 10 millimeter bolts, which are right there. And then with a little bit of persuasion, it should come off. So let's get this gasket cleaned off and go ahead and put this sucker back together and then we can go on to flushing the transmission. I was taking a look at these solenoids here, solenoid packs, and if you look at them on the side, they've got these um, ring pins that come down. That's the old one. This is the new one. And the old one, when the spacer plate is put on here, it's about how far they stick out. Which is about how far they stick out on the new one. Whereas, whoops, if I put the spacer plate on there, they do not really stick out at all. Which leads me to believe that the new version of the solenoid pack does not use this spacer plate. Which this spacer plate seems to be the bracket that holds the bottom of that um, rubber cover. Which, as we saw, this one does not have the little hole for. So we're going to go ahead and clean the gasket off the transmission housing as well. And put this sucker on without the spacer plate. Hopefully I'm right. We're all hooked up, ready to go. I'm almost out of tape here, but I have the return line from the cooler disconnected from the transmission, which another thing to note is this is different um, in the fact that there's, there's a lot of odd things about the car, the Bosch ABS to a couple other things that don't seem to mesh with what is the norm. I have that line down here, but anyway, the cooler is actually not a cooler in the radiator like most of the Chrysler cars are. So we're going to go ahead and start the car and pop it in neutral. Hope we don't just go ahead and spew oil everywhere.
Okay. Well, that looks a lot better now. We're going to go ahead and reconnect that, put the last bit of fluid in that I have, and go ahead and see if we can take it for a test run.